Uh, I think the point I'm making is that you need to know. You need to be aware of, but you also need to know. Quote the figures you have. If you have 3%, you tell your patient 3 out of 100 patients will have pancreatitis. Um, the other complications, bleeding. Any idea? Well, I'm not going to talk about what you do with pancreatitis. What we do is, uh, if, I'm, if I'm suspecting pancreatitis, if I have had a difficult case, then they all get Waltrol suppository. <coughs> they all are uh, given IV fluids, uh, hydrated very well. And um, uh, if, I, if I have an opportunity to put a pancreatic stent during the procedure, I would. So that's how you prevent pancreatitis. And if you think somebody might have it, this is what we do. Um, for bleeding, um, what is the risk of bleeding? 2%? Nine. What's the, what's the bleeding risk at your center? Anybody, anyone knows? So one had perforation, one had bleeding. Okay, so that will be one in 200. For bleeding, that's high. Okay, so I think the literature would be anywhere between one in a thousand to one in 2,000. Um, um, significant bleeding. I'm not talking about trivial bleeding that stops with balloon tamponade. Um, I'm talking about bleeding that requires blood transfusion. Um, obviously, there are some where you can't help you have an aberrant vessel going, I have seen one uh, 1993 where sphincterotomy was done and the screen went red. And my boss said, get the surgeons, tell them the patient needs surgery. Did not even attempt doing anything. When the screen goes red, uh, you know you've cut something big. And that was an aberrant gastroduodenal artery. That's the only case I remember. But our case, uh, my own experience is, uh, is definitely one in, m is more than one in a thousand. Perforation, what is the risk? So wh when bleeding occurs, what do you do? The first thing you do is basically s relax, okay? A lot of bleeding which looks bad will stop, except this was like absolute red. When the screen goes completely red, you try and aspirate, nothing is happening. You keep staying there, you know, while you try and find. In the meantime, you better get your uh, blood um, and, uh, and your surgeon ready, okay? But by and large, what happens is you see significant amount of bleeding. You wash, you wait, you wash, you wait, you wash, you wait. You, within a few minutes, the bleeding usually comes down. If it gives you an opportunity, that's why wire maintenance of wire is very important. You put a balloon, do a balloon tamponade, sit on it for a few minutes, do not be impatient, and three to five minutes, undo the balloon or deflate the balloon and see what happens. Bleeding still continuing, you can see the area, you go and inject adrenaline, okay? That's what we do. If you can see a spurter and you have clips, you can actually use the clips. It's a bit difficult to use clips with a side view sco oh, scope, and it's a bit difficult to use a gastroscope and go for a medial, go for the medial wall. So the both are not easy. So if you're experienced or you have somebody and you have the availability of clips, then, then you can always apply clips. But in our experience, adrenaline and balloon is usually sufficient for almost all cases. Um, perforation. Um, the most important thing for perforation is to, to know that you have perforation. The big problem is the retroperitoneal. Okay, you're not going to pick it up on x-rays always. So x-ray doesn't pick up. A normal x-ray does not rule out perforation. Okay, so if you're suspecting perforation, you think you have perforated, act immediately. We usually give IV flagell, IV, one of the broad spectrum antibiotics, NPO, NG tube in, aspirate, okay? Uh, uske baad, get a CT scan. Now, one of the things I have learned over years with perforation is that if I, if I have a patient who is perforated and they, don't, they start deteriorating with uh, tachycardia or tachypnea, we don't wait. There is no point, okay? 
um, I personally feel offering surgery to such patients is much better in our setup. Okay, it may be different for the Western world, but their resuscitative facilities and, uh, and, and services are much more organized and systematic than ours. So if you have somebody who is perforated, the most important thing is to do a CT scan, observe that patient very closely. If you think the patient's becoming tachypneic and tachycardiac despite NPO, despite all this, there's nothing you can do. Prefer for surgery because you leave it for some time and the whole thing gets organized and the patient gets ill it's then you've actually made a relatively nice surgical toilet that's all she needs most of the times perforations will not be found by the surgeons sphincterotomy perforations the perforations that occur occur because of the scope in the in the duodenum they obviously will be seen they are big so surgical toilet drain in and relax most patients should recover um, if there is a fistula that develops at the later time, there are many options that you have which you can close endoscopically. If not, then surgery. Um, so to me, the most important thing about perforation is identifying, recognizing perforation. You miss a perforation, you convert a disease or a problem that's treatable to almost untreatable. Okay? Um, there are sedation risks. Obviously, we've discussed them. So if you're going to have... Yeah, but not immediately. If it's a small one and you see sphincterotomy, mein, yes. And, uh, the scope perforation that occurs because of scope movements, that I don't think in, uh, that, that. In our case, the clip, clip. We did not attempt that. If it's a small perforation, it's a perforation hai, endoscopic sphincterotomy, se hai, ya needle knife, se hai, you can put a metal stent. For bleeding also, you can put a covered metal stent. And what will happen is you'll, you'll actually tamponade that. So it's a tamponade effect. It's an expensive way of treating that. Okay. The problem with perforations is that you're not going to identify small perforations that occur because of sphincterotomy and all. Quite often you will not. Or surgically, surgically, we problem difficult it's not the sphincterotomy perforation. It is the perforation that occurs because of the... Yeah, it's, it's the tear that occurs because of the scope. In our case, it was uh, the sphincterotomy. Uh, sphincterotomy was done one day before, uh, two days, 48 hours before, and in the next list, uh, it was a careless maneuver into the uh, D2 where there was uh, a diverticula, uh, which, uh, uh, which got the... No, sir. I was in. I was in. But I didn't understand that if you have a sphincterotomy in the first place, so the careless maneuver will be like your own knowledge. I have done now ERCPs, now 20, I first did my ERCP in 1991. And if you want to see sweating, I would be sweating when I go back in and I know that I have perforated. And shit. Person who did not who did the uh, uh, the side viewing, he did not report the diverticulum. Initial person, the initial person, who was there. But perforation was there. 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 was there. Perforation 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 was the first case did not tell you diverticulum, so there is an issue with reporting. So we come to the reporting issue now. If there are any questions about uh, complications, uh, I'll be happy. We will all be happy to answer. Um, it was a hell time. It was a very bad time. No, it is. But it was the first time that was Professor Saab. Yes. That was me. That was me. That was me. That was me. I, I have never done that, so I don't know. That is not an issue at all. 
No, no, what he's, his question is, when you have perforated, is it worthwhile putting an endo clip for the surgeon to be able to identify the clip? As surgeons are sitting there, they don't need it. Well, first, second, the one, uh, the cases of perforation that I know of done due to, through sphincterotomy, the surgeons, when by the time they go in, they're not going to find that. Very rare. This, the big, the, that area. Even if you are able to access this, perforations are so small that by the time you go in, and usually it's 24 hours, or maybe 48 hours. No, I, that, that I was not talking about just the perforation. I was talking about the surgical toilet. Okay, so the surgeon doesn't have to go and treat the uh, perforation. He has to go and clean, okay? So that's done, complication, quick reporting. Just, just heard about this diverticulum thing. Whatever you do, report. If you fail, uh, I won't name, but you know, some of the top centers in the country, when they fail, they don't give a report of ERC. It's ridiculous. That's nonsense. You have attempted a procedure, you have not done it, that is, uh, that's the right of the patient to know and also right of me to know why you failed. Right? Because you did not have access to duodenum, what, what was it? Okay, so you need to report, report me, you need to know what the indications were so that you can cover yourself and also the person knows what it is. So our report says indications, whatever it is. Our reports also have the labs, so ultrasound finding, labs, bilirubin, etc. on the report. And then it comes down, and then we have whether you had access to the, uh, what was the ampulla like? You have to describe that normal, that's good enough. Uh, PD cannulated or not cannulated? TK cannulated how many times? I think it's becoming more and more important. And if you look at the recent literature, there have been a lot of emphasis on, on first pass cannulation, second pass cannulation. How many passes did you take? How many times did you go to the pancreatic duct? I think it's important to, to start noting that in your notes. So that tells you, well, uh, this patient is sometimes someone that I would worry about. This is the patient who needs Walterl suppositories. From the cholangiogram point of view, it's very important to write what you've seen, okay? So, you know, where exactly is the stricture? W you know, um, whether um, uh, stones were clear, cholangiogram, occlusion cholangiogram was done or not, whatever you've done, write that down. Uh, you know, there, it, it always helps. <coughs> okay. uh, <coughs> complications immediate, it's important. So reports should contain all this. Uh, it's not like CBD cannulate is stand placed. Where? Stricture in CBD, where? Okay. Um, so I, I, you know, I don't want to go too much into it. So, but I think it's important to spend time on reporting. It helps you when the patient comes next time. I don't remember, you don't remember your patients. You look at the report and say, okay, ye kiya tha, chalo, theek hai. Okay, report is not complete. Aapke apne patient mein aapko parishani ho okay. And it also tells everybody when he will read your report, and say, what kind of a report is that? Time for cannulation, time for procedure. I think what you can do is you can ask your technicians and say, well, from the time you attempted, how long did it take? But it doesn't mean anything to me. If you have spent 10 minutes positioning ampulla, I only had two goes at the ampulla, what difference does it make whether you've taken 10 minutes or five minutes? What is important is how many times have you actually had a go at the... Uh, and time is also different. His timing would be different, mine is different. You know, somebody who's learning is different, so how do you know what time is good? It will be actually my own time that I know. Uh, I can't compare with him. He, you know, if he's very good, uh, my time will be more. That doesn't mean I'm doing a bad job, it's just he's good. So what I'm saying is, my, in my opinion, I don't know if you agree, it's the time you actually go into the pancreatic duct is the time that you spend getting into the ampulla. How many, how many times have you poked? You can keep looking at the ampulla, it would make no difference, it would not cause any complications. Okay, right? Absolutely. That should be applicable to anything that you do. 
very important is if you're going to do brush cytology, it should be done properly. The slides have to, make, to be made then and there. Um, the whole prep is done then and there. There is no point doing this, putting it in some, you know, whatever device you have and then send it to the, the yield is going to be zero. Um, so, and especially with the cytopathology service we have, it's not good at all. I think we've covered almost everything. Sajda, yes. you can take over. I have... Uh, oh, okay, so you have to tell me what we... Right, quickly, what we do is, and this is, um, you know, this is also based a little bit on how, how Allah made us. We are all incentive-based. Okay. Uh, we like, that's why Jannat ka bhi concept hai na. Incentive, incentive nahi hota toh, phir aap achche kaam kiyo karenge. Aage kuch nahi hota toh. So, this is basically to know what we've done has been useful or not yet. Uh, was it useful for us? It's always useful for us. We get together, we have good chat, we see good cases, we discuss, we argue, we differ. That's all fun for us. We need to know if it was worthwhile for you. So, we start with hands-on candidate, Dr. Ghulam Abbas. You, uh, cup, I'll tell you what we want to know. We need to know where, when you came for the course, aap kuch soch ke the, was the course up to your expectations? Um, did you think it was beneficial for you? And uh, would think anything that you think, koi major cheez jo aapko lage ke, ye ho jai to bada ho jai, sir. Khane ke lawa. <laughs> or, um, so there's the three things and uh, would you recommend to, to others or not? Four questions for each one of you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, basically, I uh, travel karnega. I did a colonoscopy uh, course in September, mm. and uh, I had uh, very little experience of the ERCP. But after course, the change I noted, uh, and the amount uh, to extent I improved. So, us cheez koi madhe nazar rakhte hue, main yahan par wapas aaye course ko, aur hopefully I will get a more. Hello. So, would you recommend it to others? Uh, yes, I have uh, recommended. Uh, okay, and and do you think it was? Uh, is there anything you think we need to do to improve? Uh, Sir, agar ye twice a year ho jaye to locally ho aur bhi asani ho jayegi. Okay, Zia. Zia. It's always a pleasure to be at Surgical 4. Uh, uh, lovely experience. Uh, and truly thing, I learned more than I expected. <laughs> I was uh, not expecting that I will learn this much. You it have was to disregard his answers because he's working with me. <laughs> <laughs> so say anything negative, don't say anything positive. It was good, there was nothing negative. I was just wondering if we could see some EUS live here. Uh, this is an ERCP course. Why do you want to see ERS? I mean, so for God's sake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> double, double <laughs> yeah. Look, one thing is, two things are coming. Look, one thing is, 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 one अरे इतना माशाल्लाह सब वहाँ पे अच्छा जी शरियार सर हमारे को डायरेक्टर हैं सर मैं खड़े हो के आपके बराबर होती हूँ कुछ नजर ही नहीं आना राइट डॉक यू हैव द माइक ओ ओके 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 I found it uh, fruitful uh, and <coughs> it's a uh, broad change in me and definitely I will recommend to other uh, they should uh, have this course at least uh, it, it, if they had uh, in the beginning then they will get more benefit. Yes. I think I don't need the mic, do I want to be very loud? 
No, no, we want to have. If it's not recording. Uh, well, I'm uh, I'm coming here second time. Uh, first, I came for uh, the colonoscopy course, uh, and it was a wonderful experience working with Vakar, Paul, and uh, uh, Dr. Sajda, Dr. Saad. Uh, this time, uh, what I learned from last time, this is the place where I can come up and tell openly my weaknesses, and without the fear of being mocked or ridiculed about it. So that is what I learned from here. Uh, I was talking to Dr. Sajda that I have to unlearn and then learn again. So this is my objective and I believe that it has been uh, achieved. And I feel a visible change in my approach and technique. So I will definitely recommend, I've already recommended my courses to my juniors and now I'm going to recommend this to my peers which I'm working with currently. And I hope they are willing and Dr. Sajda is going to grant them a place also <laughs> for, for the coming time. Thank you, thank you. that are available in this country and elsewhere, which is like coming and touching. This is not just coming and touching. So we understand and appreciate, apart from giving you hands-on experience, Baki joke criticizes. <laughs> I said, uh, first, thank you very much. You all, uh, you all done very well to train, to train people like us. Um, I had certain difficulties, especially in cannulating the ampulla. And in this course, I realized the mistake I was doing. I was uh, cannulating the ampulla from the side, and I was striking from to the side wall. And I, now I know what mistake I was doing. Uh, in fact, when they, uh, the, train, the hands on were doing, I had itching my hands and I was, <laughs> I wanted to grab the scope and do the same cannulation because I realized they, all, they were having the similar difficulties which I do have. And I strongly recommend others to do the same course. You found it useful? Being yeah, yeah, it's very useful. Uh, thank you. It's again a pleasure to be here. And as uh, I started uh, last year, uh, but it's still my status is remain the observer. Uh, and I'm lucky enough to be uh, promoted to hands-on next month, inshallah, in the upcoming colonoscopy workshop. Uh, the thing which I have to add, uh, because it's very uh, structured and very uh, good program, uh, it's almost uh, uh, first copy of a program uh, brought from England. I think if, uh, as we are now four ob observers, so if we are in the suite or in near to the to the area where the the, the, the ERCP is going on, so uh, we have more chance to see the uh, hand movements and uh, because when uh, Dr. Khaled was pointing out uh, on the fluoro that this is the thing which which we are lacking because and we are uh, talking uh, sometime on a different topic where there is uh, another, another thing which is going on there and Dr. Mustafa has a very low tone. Uh, we can't hear properly, but he is very good in uh, every millimeter uh, explanation of the procedure. So, in my humble opinion, if uh, it is possible for uh, you, so so it, it, the, we we think that as an observer, we think that we be more appreciated and we be more. Uh,
we just want to be here. So instead of like having everybody in the same place, you have projection of all three or four uh, scenes at the same time. So you can go from. Yeah. 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 Yeah
feedback from the trainers? What was the experience in the school? Trainers, right? Trainers. No, the half trainers. <laughs> half trainers. Half trainers. No, I was a substitute. So substitute. No, I was a it's always, uh, on a personal note, it's always a pleasure coming here. Not uh, just enjoying the trade, uh, <coughs> teaching aspect of it, but meeting my friends. Uh, secondly, on a personal note, I learned quite a lot from it myself. That's my honest opinion. I learned from my colleagues, I learned from you people, I learned from everyone, from Wasim, from Tech. Because in this, even when I write my appraisal, I write that it improves my own training abilities. Because there are also commitments there. And the more I work here, the better my expertise gets at it. So there's no doubt. It is very rewarding for us to do that. In the beginning, my opinion was very strongly, which I used to hold, that we will not observe observers. But I have been proven to be wrong. Because I have seen that observers also gain a lot of things here. Because I thought that we are purely, strictly like in England, we are doing that. But there was more demand, so that's why we have seen, and I am very happy to be proved wrong, that how many children have experienced it and what they have gained from it, and they are inspired to attend the hands-on. And our only goal is to do that. The other thing is that I have been आपके साथ मजाक मजाक करते हो, there's nothing personal in it, it's only to lighten up the atmosphere, क्योंकि हम लोग ये नहीं चाहते कि हमारे और आपके दरमियान कोई distance हो, it has to be teaching तभी ठीक होती है जब आपके दरमियान कोई borders या barriers ना हो, ऐसे नहीं है कि उस साल ऊपर और इस शागिर नीचे, ऐसी नहीं है, it should be a two-way traffic, and that's when you learn more, जब भी आप perform तब अच्छा करते हैं when you are relaxed, and मैं हमेशा ये quote करता हूँ कि Mercedes Benz का ये स्लोगन होता है कि engineer like no other car in the world कि the the performer या engineer is in the best optimal position तो गाड़ी उसकी जी टर्न होती है आप नहीं तो इसी वजह से हम चाहते हैं कि आप हमेशा relaxed हो आप interactive हो आप open हो and you give us your honest opinions all the time ठीक डॉक्टर खाले खाले साहब यार what I do, like I, uh, I have two advanced fellows. So I am a program director for advanced and ask a fee. So I teach them every day. But I really uh, feel like uh, every, uh, I need to come back and uh, teach my own uh, uh, people, teach my own kids. And uh, so it's really, really, I feel really good about it uh, coming over here. And uh, it's not easy. Traveling for two days? <laughs> this time it was really two days and uh, I slept only probably five hours out of those two days and landed here but anyway it's really rewarding for me the same thing is we learn from each other everybody in different parts of the world have uh, uh, different techniques and we teach other we learn from each other and uh, when I was doing my own fellowship or training so the way that the program was set up there were two fellows one would observe each case, other would do, and the other one would observe the next case and the, uh, uh, one fellow would do. So what happens is like when you are doing case, I'm saying, okay, move the small wheel away from you, and you do it unconsciously sometimes. You have, that doesn't register in your brain. But the person who is sitting and listening to that, it registers in his mind. So its observation is really as important as doing the case yourself. You may learn sometimes more during obser uh, observation, especially if you have done a case, because then you know, now you are thinking and registering in your brain. So in, uh, the person who was doing it at that time, you are so stressed, and uh, you have no idea what's happening. You are just following <coughs> commands. So I think it uh, should uh, happen the uh, same way, observers and uh, 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 like the hands-on. But like the other thing is that it's just so big for me, for me especially, I can come and uh, teach my own people. I feel like I'm giving back. So you guys are really, uh, I think it, not just because of you guys are here, the hands-on, I think the quality is improving every year for some, uh, it is. Improving and improving and improving. The first time I came, 
and uh, to up till now. I think you guys are uh, uh, maybe have more experience and uh, learning on yourself more, and it's becoming uh, easy to uh, first uh, for you guys to make you unlearn and then learn. So it's becoming easy. That's a good thing. So yeah. thank you. I don't think, I mean, for me it's the same. We used to come here and I learn. Okay. This is my father. So, you know, he's the man who's behind our EUS program. He's taught EUS to us. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have uh, people come work with us. And then, as I said, there's so much learning in teaching you, like Vakar said. Uh, it's unbelievable. A lot of things that I used to do, I had no idea. And now, I, you know, with teaching, we learn. Um, I don't know how many of you know about this or not. Outside UK, this is the only course of this sort that we know of anywhere. Okay. UK also is one so, center. So, so UK maybe there is one there, center. Initially there were two centers, no content and Liverpool. Liverpool, I was reading it, then I was reading it. Very wonderful. I like this man, he's very <laughs> honest. <laughs> so, uh, so I think, so I think, so I think for us it's uh, you know it's it's we feel very happy that uh, we are able to do something um, and and something of some standard because you know both people sitting on my right and left have have, have seen uh, you know some of the best people in the world some of the best courses and conferences. So we can't, we're not at par with them, but at least we're doing our bit to improve <coughs> things here, that's all I can say. And uh, actually, uh, I've been part of all these l lot of courses. The way you are going to get a hands-on training here, the way you are getting it, you would know and uh, will not get anywhere. But you don't get that type of uh, uh, personalized teaching. So this is, I think it's, so it's better coming, than the, if it's coming better than the all other courses, trust me. So for me, if it's coming from <coughs> both of them, um, I really don't have to say anything more. Sharyar, this is your time to say something. Uh, you need two. <laughs> I, I just want to say that the hands-on uh, candidates, the, uh, they were really good. Probably they were eager to learn. Sometimes we have a lot of expert ERCP wale aa jate, hands on. Jo jinke, jinke andar ye tendency nahi hoti seekhne ki. Thik hai? They have already learned and uh, wo chate nahi hai seekhna. To wo apna hi karte hai. To unko koi fayda nahi hota course attend karne ka. To this time I observed ke jitne bhi candidates the, they were eager to learn. To uski wajah se, it's an advantage for them ke wo, jaysay aapne kaha tha ke wo unlearn karte hai, phir wo learn karte hai. To, this was a good point that I have observed all the hands-on candidates. The other thing is that as many of you who have come to this workshop, I think you are lucky, you should consider yourself to be lucky, that all of you have these giants, gastroenterologists, from America, UK, Dr. Saad from Pakistan, so they have to remove their time for three days, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then all the program जो तैयारी होती है, you see, सारा अपना private practice छोड़के, they are here to teach you. तो you should consider yourself to be lucky in that case. Okay, thank you very much. Sir, मेरा view तो throughout ये सुनते ही रहे हैं, यहाँ पे बैठ के नहीं जा रहे। Let's give them a break. Let's give them a break. Oh, that's another thing, maybe. <laughs> okay, so with this we come to the concluding session, which is the certificate distribution. But before that, we have lots of people to thank. We have established that this has been, according to you people and according to our trainers, a very successful course. But still, for this course to be successful, there are lots of people to be you know, thanked. And I would start with our technical staff, endoscopy technicians, technicians, without them it wouldn't have been possible at all. So a big round of applause for them. <laughs> uh, and next are volunteer doctors who have worked day and night along with their own 
surgical duties. They've been, you know, collecting these patients and making them all ready for you people to, you know. And they showed that they can use the sat lab very effectively. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Sadaf, Unza, and Sumaya. Thank you very much. <laughs> then our staff, surgical force staff. Uh, staff Shahnaz, Habib, Zubair, Zakir, everyone. All right? So a big round of applause for them as well. So with that, uh, now we come on to the... Uh, we need to thank housekeeping, our housekeeping. Yeah, housekeeping. So we have uh, Prem Lakshmi and uh, Daniel, Adil, Habib, Sagir, Babu, and Anthony. Okay, while you have taken names, while you have taken names of everybody, I think you know our techs, uh, for those who don't know their names, Vaseem, Akram, Eric, and the rest Reema, of the three. Reema, Arsalan, Reema Ahad, kind? Usama, Arsalan, Usama, Uz Ahad. Uzma, Muhammad Baksh, Muhammad Zubair, Zubair Ali, Zakir Ali, Muhammad Wakar. We also have to thank um, yeah. Boston Scientific. Boston Scientific. Boston Scientific has been supporting uh, a lot of our <laughs> courses and has, um, you know, without which it would not be possible. We need financial support. And uh, thank you, Boston. Uh, and we also need to thank our Zedi Mr. Saab Zedi Saab, yeah. for the <laughs> tea and uh, biscuits. And thank we have you. to thank the, the camera team, which has always been there for us and has done a good job. Unfortunately, we had an incident where we've lost a lot of very valuable material oh uh, saved in a special <laughs> disk something. So, um, uh, I f uh, and, and last but not the least, anesthetist here? No. Have they, huh? They're gone. They're gone. Well, at least in absence, you can tell them that we are very thankful because they were dealing with the patients, made the patients <coughs> safe for us and, and did that. Um, and last but not the least, I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues on uh, you know, both my sides who have traveled from UK and, and US and taken time out and, 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 and really given their 100% to all of us. So thank you very much, Vakar and Khaled. They're both brothers for me and so, uh, you know. And um, I need to thank uh, a few more people here who are a bit more senior, who always forget to thank themselves, and that's Professor Sheriar, uh, and uh, for all the technical advances that are beyond my imagination. <laughs> I don't even know most of the things he does. Uh, thanks to Sajda for organizing and selecting the candidates for um, running this, basically, you know, the whole patient thing, course, you know, oh along with God. me, she's <laughs> she's uh, she's the one who's actually doing that. So thank you very much, Professor Sajda. We also have good news here. We have Professor Zubair, who's just left because he knew I was going to announce this. He's <laughs> just become a professor. Uh, and and, Dr. and Fr Professor uh, Farzana. Professor Farzana. So we, at this moment in time, actually have four professors, and I'm the only one who's left out. So I'm trying now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So um, I think we have thanked everybody. Yeah. Um, and so now over to you. Okay. Now for certificate distribution. We can, may we have all the trainers here, please? How much time your train? Five o'clock. You better move. Give him the slide first. Okay. So first hands on is... Dr. Wulam Abbas, yes? Okay, all right. 